He's the head of consultancies at Sir Lenny Henry Center for Media Diversity, which aims to increase diversity across the industry. Marcus, thanks for being here. What did you think of the first three episodes of this docu-series? I thought the first three episodes were absolutely fascinating. I think it's really important that we get past what might be royal gossip and look at some of the substantive issues that actually go beyond Harry and Meghan's story and tells us something about British society and British media in particular. And the fact is, is that only 0.3%, according to the Reuters Institute, only 0.3% of working journalists on major publications are black. And so what you're seeing constantly, whether it's the Meghan and Harry story, whether it's other really important stories, is that they're being mediated through a white prism. And this has just come into absolute force when there's such an important racial element in this story. But this is, but this issue goes way beyond um, uh, Meghan and, and Harry's personal story. This is about how do we actually reflect society? How do we report on society? Now, in the first episodes, though, it seems Meghan was initially embraced by the royal family and the UK in general, including the media. Right? There was this sense that she and Harry could help modernize the monarchy. So what happened? Absolutely. So this goes, I think this is a really good example and goes to the heart of a lot of the work that I do, which looks at diversity and inclusion. I'm sure you've heard the phrase diversity and inclusion. So diversity is just increasing the number, increasing the headcount of maybe black people, Asian people, um, disabled people, LGBTQ. So it's increasing the headcount. And I think lots of people want to embrace that. And lots of people support that, as we saw with the with the wedding. But then you get to the inclusion bit. And that's where the person actually asserts their identity, asserts their values and their culture. And that's what happened with Meghan, in that she started to assert her own identity, her culture, and that's where you get pushback. And that's, and if you look at large institutions, invariably, they're able to attract, they're able to increase the diversity. Their retention rates are atrocious because they don't actually embrace and have proper inclusion. And so what you're seeing in microcosm with Harry and Meghan is a problem which lots of organizations, not just royalty has, which is it wants to increase diversity. It celebrates when it has a quote unquote diversity higher. And then because they don't actually do inclusion properly, they don't have retention. The people move on. And Marcus, what do you say to, to critics of sort of the whole argument that Harry and Meghan are making it and saying that the royals aren't really supposed to have an individual identity and that maybe that was part of the problem here? Um. I think everybody has an individual identity that you either go with your corporate culture, in this case, you're talking about the palace, or you assert what your identity is. Everybody has an individual identity. Prince Charles has an individual identity. Everybody knew that he talked to plants and um, was loved to architecture back in the day. We know Princess Diana's individual identity. So everybody has, and they all pick individual charities that they want to champion. And so I think the idea that people don't have individual identities seems rather flawed to me. Marcus Ryder, it's always great to have you. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.